Okay. Uh, hopefully I should be live. Okay, we are. Good. Uh, so for anyone here, uh, I'm just going to type this in chat. Tweet. Or retweet my thing. By the way, if you'd like, please, thanks. Heart. Whoops, I messed up the heart. That's fine. Um, so I'm going to give like a little bit of a spiel here thing before I start. Uh, hopefully the title updated. If not, uh, you'll see that in a second. Yes, I know. Okay, so yeah. So this stream is going to be what I'm calling the Dust Force Custom Map Awards for 2016. Um, and basically, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I wanted to do it last year, and I got like halfway through doing it, and then kind of never got around to finishing it, and so that never happened. Um, basically, I just wanted to highlight custom maps that have come out that I thought were cool and neat, and uh, yeah, because like for, I don't know, probably three years of me playing this game, I played literally every single custom map that came out ever for like a three year period and although I didn't start doing that or I've, I'm no longer continuing doing that and I haven't played a majority of these maps um, I did look through a lot of them in fact all of them and yeah I don't know I still feel like people should play custom maps more and especially the good ones and there's a lot of them so it's hard to sort that out and I also just wanted to give people recognition I thought for putting in the work to make good custom maps because the game's been out for like four or five years or some shit now and uh that the effort that some people are still putting into custom maps is insane and I think they deserve some recognition for it so that's kind of like my host spiel or whatever anyway okay so to like start the actual official thing uh I looked through every map that came out in 2016 which was 536 maps in total. Um, I forget what the start map was, but I noted down the end one, which was Worth Advanced Course. Um, that was the last one I checked, and that was, I believe, the last map to come out in 2016. So this is all updated, even including the nerfs and Mirk maps that came out like literally on December 31st or something. Uh, I did look at those and take those into account on these. Okay, so I'm including 84 maps in these in these rankings because there were actually a significant portion of maps that came out in 2016, which I liked. Um, I sorted them into categories because different maps, I think, should be recognized and stand out to me for different reasons and different things, so I kind of wanted to highlight that. Um, and then there is an overall category where I just list like a bunch of like the best maps of 2016 kind of. So that's going to be, I guess, like more the official like award at the end. But there's like smaller category awards kind of, um, I don't know, it's like a normal award show or whatever where you have like the actual like best album or whatever, but then you have like best in the genre kind of thing. I don't know. Um, so our, our first category here is going to be art, and this is kind of more like general aesthetic, I guess, more than art, but it's also just kind of like, I don't know, I tried to take into account unique things, things that I hadn't seen before, or just like creativity and like clever, like that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, this, this category has 10 maps in it. Uh, I am talking live, yeah. Um, yeah, 84 maps out of 536 total. I'm not, it's not pre-recorded, god damn it. I am reading the chat, by the way. I had to, like, do my little intro spiel, and now I looked over. Um, okay, so, coming in at number 10 for art, uh, is the map The Concept of Dust by Shin Rakoa. And, uh, on each of these maps, I'm gonna be watching, what? Steam is running to play Dust Force game. Is this gonna work now? I might have to, like, restart my game. Why isn't it working? Hello? I don't know what to do. That's like a problem. Is this actually gonna work? That would be frustrating if I'm doing if I'm like spoiling the surprise. Come on. You can do it. Okay, let's try this now. Hopefully this loads in. I have to redo all the settings on the sound now. Okay, hopefully it's close enough. Uh, now will it let me watch the replay? There we go. Okay, we're good. So this is The Concept of Dust by Shinrikoa. 
Um, and uh, I just really liked the background on this map was the main thing. Uh, I thought the background tiles were kind of cool, and I really liked the ending prisms as well, kind of uh, with it. So that was number 10. Number 9, we have Violets Are Blue by Wife in Training. Uh, and I believe this person was kind of a new map maker in 2016. So, yeah, thumbs up from Bird. Makes pretty good maps. Uh, I just really liked the background in this map, and also the spike red things. I don't know how to describe that. Um, I used those in one of my maps ages ago, uh, Soul Parapets or whatever, but I really liked it here as well. And I just thought the colors and like everything of, of this map was pretty neat. Um, and like the back black and white contrast and the little flowers in the end and things like that. So yeah, um, just a pretty cool looking map overall. Coming in at number eight, we've got Alien Ark by a Swedish Magyar. People need like better names, by the way. Uh, and this was like solely to do with the, it, the background is pretty good, but the changing color thing uh, was also pretty neat. And some other people have done that in the past and even maps past this, but this is kind of like, it was one of the main aesthetics of the map, I think, in the in the tiles. And I've never really seen somebody do it outside of a virtual level, I think. I think this might be the, one of the only levels that does that, really, so... I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, coming in at number 7, we've got Star Wars Fan by Twinkie SWF. Um... This is one of two kind of space-themed themed maps, um, but having reference material to compare this map to, I think it just does a pretty good job of, like, you've got the Death Star in the background, you've got the, uh, the X-Wing fighter there, you've got, like, the asteroids. Um, so yeah, this map did a lot of cool kind of creative things here. I don't recognize what this is supposed to be, actually. But then you've got, like, R2-D2. Uh, C-3PO, and I think here is the, uh, like, that's the Millennium Falcon. I forget what that's called. TIE Fighter? I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a TIE Fighter. I'm not up on my Star Wars knowledge. Oh yeah, Tatooine. And the whole, like, desert landscape, kind of. We got the, the Skywalker, like, intro house. Yeah. So that's like a cool, cool map there. Uh, coming in at number six, we've got Mars Chino by Big Diesel. Uh, Big Diesel, I'm pretty sure, was also a new map maker in 2016. Um, and this map, I just thought had like a really cool use of the colors and like the background and the tiles and everything. Um, like, I just really liked the color palette on this map. Was, like, the main thing. I mean, most of these maps, uh, I also liked the gameplay and, like, a lot of other things. But I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to give them recognition for something that they, like, extra stood out to me for. Alright, coming in at number 5 here, we've got Measure by Subpar Fiddle. Uh, Subpar Fiddle has, like, been a map maker since the beginning of Atlas, pretty much. Uh, and here, the color palette especially, it was like these really neat pastel colors, I, I would say. Um, and like the background and everything. I like the little, almost like crayon texture he has in the platforms with the little highlights as well. I don't know, he just does a lot of really neat things aesthetically that I don't think many other people do. Um, and he has a really unique style as well. Alright, number four, we've got The Moon by Sunny Day. So this is the other like space-themed map that I was talking about. Um, and this map stood out to me especially for one reason, and we will see it once we get in here. The Earth in the background! The globe! I could not believe when I first saw that looking through this map. That is like an amazing globe rendition of the Earth, and like, yeah, that just like instantly blew my mind when I saw that.
So that's The Moon by Sunny Day at number four. Coming in at number three, we've got... Oh, this is... Shin made it hard for me on this one. So the map is by Shin Ricola. It's Magnoliophyta, I'm going to say. Short little map here. Um, so this map stood out to me because the sunflower explosions also blew my mind when I first saw them. I, like, the whole idea of the sunflower and then the exploding, like, little yellow leaves of it. As soon as I opened this map and, like, saw this, it just blew my mind and I was, like, immediately, like, amazed. Um, I, I mean, I also like the, the little, like, leafy, you know, purple kind of aesthetic here. And the little chains, I'm not really sure, like, why they're there necessarily, but I don't know. It, it, it just blew my mind immediately so much and I still, like love it every single time I see it because it's just such a cool effect I think um, and and really creative as well so that's number three I'm not even gonna try on the name again <laughs> by Shin Rikawa. okay coming in at number two we've got not too hard by wife in training uh, who I think also had another map in here yeah that was by let's blue that was the number nine um, this map kind of also just had like a really cool color scheme to it um, I really liked the, the like, glass and greenish blue, kind of, on the platforms, but then just the bright, like, pink. This reminded me of, uh, like, a cyberpunk, almost, kind of, theme. I don't know, this, this map just, like, has a, has a really cool color palette, I think, and, uh, a pretty cool, interesting look to it that's pretty unique. Like, it's, it's, it's not something you see in a lot of other maps. It's kind of virtual, but kind of not at the same time. So that's number two. And number one for our art slash aesthetic category is Net Slum by Mirk. Um, I don't really think Mirk needs an introduction because all of his maps are kind of beautiful and you could probably make a category more than 10 of just Mirk maps for art alone. But uh, I tried to keep it varied here and there are plenty of Mirk maps that I'm going to be listing for a number of other things so this map stood out to me uh for the 3d like depth it had and the realism and especially the neon signs that were transparent as well um and the lettering on them um like i don't know just everything about this map is really unique and kind of interesting in a way and it's it's a good like wallpaper map where I kind of just can look and just scan my eyes across and always find something new and interesting that I hadn't really like seen or noticed before. Even this little like fence gate balcony here is really nice. I don't know. I just I I love that map a lot. So Mirk, of course, probably wins the the art and aesthetics category. Alright, our next category. I've mentioned this a few times. I wanted to highlight some people's first maps that I thought stood out to me as exceptionally above average and pretty good. Um, so there are only three in here because there are only three I found in looking that kind of like really stood out to me. Um, but I still thought they deserved recognition. So I imagine as as these years go on, hopefully, I don't know how much longer I'll be doing this. And I do kind of want to go back and do past years as well. Um, maybe I'll try and do that like in July or something as like an, a six month thing to catch up. Um, but yeah, there, there's not a lot of new map makers that are coming to the game now, and especially not ones that stick around or that make extremely, like, maps that can stand out to me for somebody who's played, I don't know, probably like 2,000 custom maps or something. So, coming in at number three on our list is Uncle's Cave by Blank. Uh, and it's not empty, that's their actual name, B-L-A-N-K. Um... So in terms of, like, first maps, this map actually has some pretty neat, interesting gameplay, and it's built pretty well, and yeah, that's, like, above average for a first map, to be honest. Um, you can tell that he's played the game, basically. Um, and yeah, for a first map, that is, like, significantly above average. Nice, fun little quick map. Gets It gets the basics down. It, it's, it's visible, it has some pretty decent gameplay, and it all works and isn't like clunky or awkward and a mishmash of some some nasty ideas. So yeah, solid thumbs up for a first map. Continue. Uh, I'm not sure if he's done many other maps since then, but you know, 
having a good start like that, I can tell like that person could make some cool maps in the future. All right, coming in at number two, we've got Cavern Mist River by June. Um, I'm not sure that this person has either made any more maps since this, uh, but this is also kind of in the same thing. Like, I, this actually has some like background work and things like that. Um, so this map is e even, I would say, above average for people's non-first maps. And like the gameplay in here is actually pretty neat as well. Um, like you've got some like hideout inspired area here, um, and the f the start was kind of like reminiscent of tunnels. And yeah, this is just like for first map that is like in one of the top five first maps I've probably ever seen from people. Um, so yeah, that especially stood out to me. And that was n number two was Cavern Mist River by June. So number one, this is I think by far the best first map that anyone has made that I've seen outside of like some of the very beginning maps um, on Atlas where everyone's first map was kind of good and now not good in the test of time kind of thing but that's more due to the editor being new back then all right so number one is under construction by big diesel um he has put out maps since then but this map for a start uh has really interesting gameplay extremely interesting gameplay i would say like really unique uh it has like a cool aesthetic to it and a theme and it plays really well and it has like background work and everything else like this map is actually a really good map on its own and the fact that it was somebody's first map blows my mind. He made a crane, and like, this this map is like by far the best one that I've ever seen for a first map. And there's like a few things in the background where things don't layer properly or something like that, uh, where you can tell he's like getting used to the editor kind of, but the gameplay is there. Like, he's played the game. You can tell that's, that's like the main thing for somebody to have a good first map, is for them to have actually played the game first, which isn't necessarily their fault if they haven't, because I understand playing with the map editor, low level editor is pretty cool, uh, and I did it before I had really understood the game too, but still, uh, when, when somebody has, you can tell and it makes a difference. So for a first map, easily like by far the best first map that I've ever seen under construction by Big Diesel, and uh, yeah, he's made some good other maps since then, and he's possibly, in fact probably, in these other categories further down the line. Alright, so that was our first map category. So our next category is kind of, I think, maybe going to be the least cohesive category, um, and that's kind of what I would call experimental maps, um, or like concept maps, and these are basically just ones that I thought did something a little bit different and unique that I didn't really see very often, in, in fact like extremely rarely. Some of them are like completely brand new or like one or two other maps ever have done this kind of theme or idea. And I always like people kind of experimenting and putting like little constraints on themselves and then still seeing what kind of good maps can come out from those constraints. So. Some of these, it's kind of hard to tell what the theme is. I'll try and point it out if I can see them. Um, so our first one here is Goop by Spice Man. Let me load it up here. Um, so I think for this map, kind of like the main concept I saw was in the gameplay of it. Um, it just seemed like really unique gameplay kind of. And even though the map itself is kind of simple, uh, Spice Man has made some pretty good maps. And I don't know, I like I liked the aesthetic, I liked the theme of it being like, it, it seemed to me when looking at this that he tried to make it almost an actual sewer, if that makes sense. Um, and I don't know, you, you can tell that he kind of had an idea when making this map. He had a, he had a concept in mind. Uh, and Spice Man has made some other pretty good maps. So that's number 10. Number nine here, we have Traffic Circle by JM, uh, or aka Cube on Atlas. Now we'll bring this one up. Uh, so this map, I, A, I just think it has some pretty unique gameplay with the attacks, um, and JM kind of continued doing this gameplay theme in other maps past this. Uh, but you also have kind of the unique thing of the end being directly accessible from the start, and then you going around the entire map and then coming back to it. Um, I just thought that was kind of a neat, like, cheeky idea. Um, 
And it's not specifically unique to this map, but it's also just a good map on its own. So I thought it uh, thought it was worthy of a mention here. All right, coming in at number eight, I was surprised coming across this map, and it made my list. And it's number eight. That is the map four 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 five by Verizon. Uh, I have been critical of this person's maps in the past. Um, I think they have some difficulty in making what I would consider to be some some good maps. But this map stood out to me because of the concept and creativity of this map it was so unique. And I really like the art style and aesthetic to it. And it's kind of minimalist in a way. And I don't know, this map just kind of blew my mind when I first saw it. Uh, and it still kind of does. It's not a spectacularly good map, I think, to play, but I can tell the concept behind it, and it is interesting for that aspect. And I think, in terms of other maps that I've seen, as, seen especially from this person, uh, this map is one of the best ones that they have ever made, and I really just... I like the aesthetic of this map, and I think you could definitely take that concept and iterate upon it further and come out with something really cool. So, shoutouts to Verizon for surprising me, especially. Alright, coming in at number 7, we've got Quill Chase by Bobma99. Uh, I have kind of fiddled around with this idea since the very beginning on Atlas, uh, which is basically the end of the level, and then you having to do something in order, from the beginning, in order to kind of actually access the ending of the level, if that makes sense. Uh, so I did it with wolves originally, as wolves chasing you around, and Bob Mahir does it with a quill. Um, I actually tried to do this map ages ago and couldn't get it to work very well, but Bob Ma worked it out here, and the quill follows you the entire way, and you end up completing the map, assessing it, by getting all the dust before you have the quill hit the end bear. Uh, so yeah, cool map by Bama99. Number seven. All right, number six. We've got one beer by Shilil Point. Oh no, wait. I put this down as a Sheila map, but this is a fish map. All right, that's an error on my part. Remind me to fix that later. Somebody pinged me on Discord to fix that. I don't know how I got that messed up. Probably just a copy-paste error. Uh, so this map, you're, you're clipping inside all the blocks, and there's dust blocks. This map blew my mind when I first saw it. I knew you could do this, but I didn't really think it would actually like have good gameplay. Which is like the craziest thing to me. But this map is really cool and really neat, and I've seen some other people expand on this concept later. And yeah, solid map. Love it. All right, here, I can actually fix that right now. All right, live typing. It's going in the VOD, not editing this at all. All right, coming in at number five for the experimental category, we've got Apartment Complex by Twinkie SWF. Load it up here. All right, uh, so this map, at first I thought it was just kind of a standard like multi-route combat map kind of thing but it's actually really interesting because of the key doors here where you unlock two and then can unlock the upper areas and then unlock the bottom um, so it actually ends up being a kind of neat route where you intentionally leave dust like that until the end um, and I just thought this map had some pretty interesting gameplay here that uh, I think people should grind this map more. My only kind of like non thing I like about this map is the ending. Um, I just wish there, wish there was more dust and you could super easier at the bottom kind of. Uh, but overall, cool concept. Like it. Solid map. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see some more people do some interesting things with that kind of idea. All right, number four, we have Grimy Grotto by a Swedish Magyar. Uh, so this is another map where 
you can tell he kind of had a concept when making it, and I especially liked the dust blocks and slimes here, uh, the rooted slimes especially, but the dust blocks inside of blocks, uh, kind of like idea, um, and part of the routing on this map. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a cool, neat little, neat little map with some interesting gameplay, uh, and it also looks pretty cool as well. I like the, the kind of just green hue over everything. So that's our number four. Coming in at number three for the experimental, kind of clever, creative, constraint, idea, concept, category thing is Don't Touch the Dust by Quantum Coral. Uh, we've seen some other people do this concept before, uh, but this map, I thought, especially had some pretty good gameplay uh, and in interesting uh, kind of variation on it in where the dust was specifically placed and actually kind of had an interesting way that you built the gameplay around not touching the dust. So that's number three. Coming in at number two, we have This Map's Stupid by Wife in Training. Uh, so I don't think this map is stupid, and that's why it's my number two. This is another map that I saw kind of expand on the clipping into tiles gameplay idea. Uh, and I thought this map as well used it really well, really creatively and interestingly, and actually had some pretty cool gameplay even though you're clipped into blocks the whole time. Like, avoiding the spikes while you're inside of the tiles and things, like, that's just super cool. Super cool idea. Gotta love it. That's number two. Alright, number one is Sunken Temple by Sunny Day. Alright, this map is kind of a mess to look at, but it's actually really neat. Um, th the main concept of this map, I think, was in so many of the different ways to route it, and multi-route maps aren't necessarily super unique in themselves, but the size of this one, and I think the creativity and the variance in the gameplay of it, um, and having like the dust as well just worked out to only have a hundred for the end kind of i just think this map it, it looks good it plays well it's super unique in the gameplay especially um and i really would like to see not not necessarily more maps in this theme which i definitely would but also just people to grind this map more because i think there's a lot of cool things to be seen in just watching various people's replays on this map this is the kind of map where you don't just want to watch the number one replay, it's it's cool to watch even like the number 20 person's replay because they're gonna do something different, like all the way down, pretty much. So that's that category. Okay, now to catch up back on check, since I've been neglecting that, we'll take a brief pause here. Um, so yes, I'm reading chat. Um, I'm kind of like trying to not respond because I'm, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a, a zone, I'm in a mood and I'm just like going and I don't want to like interrupt people. Uh, people's maps or whatever, I kind of want to give them the spotlight for, for that time. So yeah, sorry about the error fish on that. Uh, explaining the categories, I've been doing that as I go, and yes, Twinkie, I, as you have seen now, I've, I've mentioned your maps a couple times. Uh, but yeah, I would basically just say go back, watch the VOD for the category, like, explanations, kind of. Um, I'm trying to do them as I go, but then kind of, like, I know this is gonna take a while, so I'm kind of, like, trying to keep the pace going, and I don't want to dilly-dally too much. So, yeah, I'll probably, like, not read yet. Or I'll read yet, but I won't respond for another little while. All right. Our next category, uh, this is the first category where I'm going to have honorable mentions. Um, because there wasn't enough to have it be, like, a clean number further. So I have it a top five with two honorable mentions. Um, top seven felt weird, even though it's an arbitrary number to cut it off at. Um... And there wasn't really enough that stood out to me, especially for this category specifically, um, to lengthen it to 10. So I'm just going to have them as honorable mentions. I figured that was kind of close enough. You could consider these basically 7 and 6 if you wanted, but yeah. Okay, so that's the the honorable mentions. So the, our category here is just fast. 
and it's maps where you just go fast. You just have fun. Sometimes you want to play a map and you want it to be like downhill, but not like downhill because downhill is an, it's it's a tiring grind that's exhausting. But a map that exp encapsulates the essence of what downhill is in a map that isn't downhill. So for our first honorable mention in the category of going fast, we have Crimson by Indapop. Uh, and this was specifically made for the Dust Force Arcade Nexus pack thing. Uh, I haven't actually played like the whole arcade itself, but as a map itself, uh, this map has pretty good gameplay. You go fast in it, that's all it needs to do. And it's good at doing that. Uh, the background and color scheme on this map is also pretty cool. Yeah, Crimson. Nailed it. Alright, our second honorable mention for the Going Fast category is Acro Park 5 by Spice Man. Uh, from the title, you can glean. This map is a part of a long-running series on Atlas. Some of... pretty much every map in this series, I would say, has been good, and they've almost steadily been getting better, I would say. Uh, this map kind of encapsulates going fast. You just slope boost, and you go off a jump, and then you kind of slope boost some more, and you boost some more, and these maps are just kind of really fun to play. Um, I think they kind of keep the the core of what the name is, which is basically just going off jumps and going fast, uh, that you kind of get from these kind of these kind of maps. They almost remind me of Line Rider, or um, or one of those kind of things. So yeah, Acro Park Five gets an honorable mention. All right, number five. We have Holographic, also for the Just Force Arcade by Twinkie SWF. Uh, I really like the background and color palette on this map, especially. Um, but you also just go fast, and it's fun to go fast on this map. And that's pretty much all this category is. It's a lot less. Uh, there's a lot less thought behind it than the than the concept maps an experimental category. So that's number five, Holographic by Twinkie SWF. Number four, we have What Are You Doing by Wife in Training. Uh, this map, you pretty much keep the slope boost in it through the whole map, uh, and the clipping kind of helps with that, but it also was kind of a concept experimental map at the same time. Uh, but I just thought it was so fun to keep a boost while going through several clips like that that it kind of had to be in this category instead. Uh, but leaving all the enemies behind and then coming back to super them at the end, circling all the way around, because you're going so fast that you finally get to the end and catch back up to them is pretty cool. So that's number four. Number three, we've got Jelly Roll by Indapop. Uh, this map I thought was also kind of experimental in that he did the ledge clip chain thing. Um, I've been trying to do that for a while actually, and I never really got it to work in a way that felt good. But this map is kind of short enough uh, to not overstay its welcome, and it's not really a gimmick. It's just kind of a fun little extra thing where you ledge clip a bunch of times and it looks kind of weird. Uh, but you you fly along on these spikes of these like checkerboard well, not checkerboard, but diagonal square spikes or whatever, and you just ledge clip up, up a bunch of them. So that's number three, Jelly Roll by Indapop. Number two, we've got Juju, also by Indapop. Uh, Indapop likes these kind of short, quick, fast maps, uh, so this is definitely kind of a category that his maps kind of fit pretty well. Uh, this map was, I think, just really cool in the gameplay aspect of it. Um, and it's a lot of attacking behind you while keeping speed, kind of. And it reminds me especially of the end of Advanced Tutorial on the dust blocks with the backlights and stuff. So yeah, that's number two. Alright, our winner for the Going Fast category is going to be Tunnel Run by Spice Man. If I can open this, there we go. Uh, so, he got an honorable mention, and this map is not in the Acropark series, but I think ended up being better than Acropark 5. Uh, and this kind of is slightly different to an Acropark map, kind of. It's It's got more spikes, it's a little bit 
more to do with walls and kind of some more interesting dust block kind of things. Uh, but I thought the gameplay on this map was really cool, really interesting, uh, while still kind of encapsulating the going fast aspect on it. So I thought Spice Man did a pretty good job on Tunnel Run. Uh, and I like the background especially to it at the end. And uh, so yeah, that's our that's our winner for the going fast category. All right. Our next category. This is kind of a, a weird category. I wasn't really sure if I should have made this category or not, kind of. But I kind of just felt like it, so I did. Um, and this map or this category also has a few honorable mentions. Uh, the category is maps that are one screen only, so the entire map is on screen from the second you load in until the end. Um, I, I, I like maps that kind of force creativity through constraints, um, and I think constraints a lot of the time can breed some interesting creativity, and that kind of works both ways. So I think constraining a map to be one screen on its own uh, gives you a limited amount of space to work in, but it also kind of makes you want to use that space as much as possible, so you maybe go over the same spot on the map a few times and loop back around to it, and things like that that I think are kind of interesting, and generally are just kind of more interesting maps. It's also a place where I'm going to get more of the arena-style levels um, that didn't really fit in any of the other categories, and I feel like they're kind of hard to judge sometimes, um, and they're kind of a things separate from the other maps a lot where some people really like combat maps and some people really hate them and so yeah that's kind of what this category is is just maps that are all on one screen so our first honorable mention is going to be Ares 0263999 by Twinkie SWF Uh, and this map is kind of in the satellite debris theme, but it's also kind of a combat level. Um, I also liked the art in on this map as well, with the earth in the background. Like, two maps in this stood out to me, really, that they did that. And uh, this map is closer up, so you can see more of the detail on the earth. But yeah, I just thought that was pretty cool. Nice little map, all in one screen from the beginning. Nice, short, sweet, cool, good. Alright. Our second honorable mention is going to be Lab X by Shinrekoa. Uh, this is more of a, a gameplay map, but I like that you can see the map from beginning to end. I thought this map has some pretty interesting difficulty uh, with the enemies and the, the dust blocks especially. Um, it's nice, it's short, it's, it's sweet, it's simple, I like it, good gameplay, solid map. Shinrakoa, Lab X. I like the ending especially, where you reveal the X from behind the, the trash. Alright. And our third honorable mention is Haunted Library by Twinkie SWF. Uh, both of the Twinkie maps, by the way, the last two, the previous honorable mention and this one, are part of his uh, new Genesis map pack. So this one is more of a storeroom mention theme combat level. Um, yeah, same as the other one, just solid, interesting, cool, short, nice, sweet, does its job. If, if you played this map and you like this map, it's exactly what you're looking for, pretty much. So that is our third and final honorable mention. Coming in at number five for the one screen category is Wave by Endopop. Uh, this is maybe one of the harder-ish style maps, uh, especially for this category, uh, but Indipop has some cool interesting little gameplay, and the entire map is, is in that little box. It's even smaller than the screen actually, but yeah, Indipop, solid, solid gameplay especially from Indipop, pretty much always. Solid map, number five. Alright, number four. We've got Blood Moon by Shinrakoa. This is kind of similar to his Lab X. He did a few maps, kind of. Um, and yeah, same as the other one. Just cool, nice, short gameplay that uh, I think is, is pretty neat that it all fits into one map and you just get the whole experience. Nice, short, sweet there. I like the background and kind of like 
foliage like mushroom on the side especially uh it's just a cool looking map i think as well it's 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 nice to have an aesthetic of a map that fits all on one screen i guess and you can actually have the entire map be on screen always and you can just look at it it's not like whizzing past you if that makes sense all right number three we have lost ruins by Twinkie SWF. This is also part of the uh, new Genesis map pack. Uh, so this one, you can kind of tell, is more of a shaded grove slash wild den kind of theme to it. Um, and I thought it for for a map, it's it's so hard to replicate the the wild den like gameplay. I think especially with the quills, and uh, I think this map especially did an extremely good job of doing that while being different at the same time uh, in a lot of ways. So, yeah, Lost Ruins coming in at number three. Number two is Reef by Mirk. And this is going to have a bit of an, uh, a bit of a further elaboration point to it. Uh, again, Mirk maps always good looking, always amazing. Uh, in addition to Reef itself here, which, hey, cool background, nice, short, sweet little combat map, uh, I'm going to kind of give an honorable mention here at number two, if that makes sense, for every other Mirk map he's made this year that is a combat kind of arena level like this that was more based on like a, a Super Smash Bros. stage. Um, so he had several. He had the Kalos Pokemon League, he had Corneria, he had Pokemon Stadium 2, he had Dreamland 64, and he had Onet. Um, so if you like Mirk maps and you like those short combat maps and you especially like Super Smash Bros, go play all those maps. They're all one screen maps, they're all kind of the combat arena style maps or whatever. And they all kind of deserve an honorable mention, but I didn't want to have like half of the list here, if it was a top 10, be Mirk maps. So I'm just kind of giving them an honorable mention there. And he gets the number two spot for Reef, which I thought was the the best of them so far. All right, number one for the one screen maps is My Dog Just Farted by Shin Rakoa. First off, the map name. No, not really. But I thought this map had some really cool gameplay um, with the dust box and the just the overall layout of the map. There's very little actual room, uh, but it uses the platforms that it has really well, I think, in almost every way. And I really just think is like, it encapsulates kind of the other Shin maps, like in just a, just a really concise, uh, like spirit of them, the essence of them. And this map, I think just like encapsulates it perfectly. Um, and I really just, I like the gameplay on this map a lot. So yeah. Uh, number one for our one screen category is My Dog Just Farted by Shin Rakoa. Alright, and our final slash second to final category, depending on how, you, uh, how you're how you going to determine it, is going to be our stock map inspired category. Um, a few of the previous maps, like the, uh, the new Genesis ones, were kind of stock inspired, but I think these were especially uh, more gameplay focused, I guess. Um, stock inspired maps and I always like seeing the stock inspired remixes obviously uh, for anyone who knows like my atlas history I've made several of them um, and there aren't a lot of people who do them but for the people who do I, I always think they kind of bring a new interesting take and idea on basing a map off of one of the stock maps in game and kind of trying to get that maps feel and gameplay especially similar but still different and unique in a new way and again it's kind of like creativity from constraints kind of thing um and i always just find these maps really interesting to play and they always kind of make me think about map making in a different way where i see how i can get an inspiration from a certain map and somebody else can get a completely different map from that same like seed planted in their head um so yeah i just think that's a really cool uh really cool thing and i i really enjoy seeing these maps uh, created, so I would like to see more of them in the future. Alright, for our first, uh, we're, we've got one honorable mention for here, for this category, and that is Spires by Sunny Day. Uh, 
Um, so this map earns an honorable mention, mainly because although it, it is tower inspired, I think it's kind of just a little bit too different from tower um, for me to really necessarily kind of like be fully on board with it as a stock map like remix. Um, but it, it's kind of different enough in a good way, if that makes sense. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Uh, it, it's a map that I think could be a good map on its own without being stock inspired. And the, the stock inspiration, I feel like, was maybe a little bit... Uh, it, it could have been done a bit more... I don't know. It could have been like more based on that, if that makes sense. Uh, for it to be like in, in the actual like top five of this category but it's still talk inspired still a good map so still play it sunny day spires all right number five also by sunny day we have the pit uh this map as you can tell once we load in inspired by abyss um i thought this one definitely encapsulated like the whole idea of abyss pretty well um, while still being a really different version from it, um, you know, going to the right first, uh, when you go down is kind of different. Using these, like, octagon blocks kind of differently, using the dust blocks really differently, um, using, like, a rooted slime, like, this map did kind of a lot of things differently, using this, this little, like, wall slide section near the end kind of really differently too. Um, so yeah, this map just kind of did a lot of things differently where... Uh, you can tell it's inspired by Abyss, but it's like a completely different map um, that's really new and interesting to play while still feeling like Abyss. So if you really like Abyss, go play The Pit by Sunny Day. Coming in at number four, we have Override by Blue-Eyed Rat. Uh, so this map inspired by control uh, again like this map goes around control in a completely different layout and route than you do in the actual level but it's still very control uh, inspired in the gameplay and things like that so I really just think that's really cool where they saw control and they said what if I just do it like the complete other way and then have it still be control um, and be everything that like the gameplay of control is pretty cool I like it. Override by Blue-Eyed Rat. Coming in at number three, this might be one of the more like controversial placings or ones that I'm like less sure of, but I still decided on anyway. First off, I didn't mention this at the start. A lot of these like rankings and decisions I made were like super hard, and I'm I probably would like reorder this list completely differently if you asked me tomorrow versus yesterday versus like the day before. Like every day of the year, I would have a different list because. With 84 maps, it's really hard to have like a, con a concrete like uh, decision on where they are in that ranking. Um, and th because I split them into categories, that helped a little bit, and that's part of my reason for doing that. If I had just a list of like 84 or 100 or whatever, if I wanted to make it a top 100, um, it would be way too hard for me to like distinction between some of the maps. So yeah. If if you if you want to like argue with me that one map should be higher or lower than another one, just like I'm, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to have this be like a feel good thing, man. I just want to like give people recognition and stuff for some cool maps. All right, I started playing this replay early, uh, and I kind of didn't mean to, but it's gonna kind of work out because this map is long. Uh, but this map is Tutorial by Czys Czys underscore at the end. I don't know. Uh, it's a hard name to say. Um, so this map was kind of inspired by the original tutorial level, um, while also kind of trying to almost redo it and be better uh, at the same time. Um, I'm not necessarily sure it's better, uh, but I think it's kind of just an interesting level on its own. And I like that it kind of still kept a lot of the theme, like with the old tutorial aesthetically in like the background placing of the tiles. Uh, of the purple color and like everything else so I just thought this map kind of was interesting take on it um, it's still long it's still interesting it, it, it's very different from the old tutorial um, that might be a good thing that might not be a good thing depending on who you ask like some people kind of like tutorial levels some people kind of think almost all of them are bad 
Um, and I don't necessarily agree with that, and I think of the tutorial levels that I've seen people attempt, this is like by far the best one. Uh, so that gets my number 3 spot for a stock inspired level. Alright, number 2, we have Watchpoint by Blue Eyed Rat. Uh, so this map, inspired by Titan, again, all the gameplay is there, but it's still very different and unique, uh, but still keeps it interesting. You know, it's, it's like, it's short and to the point, it gets the core of what you would play Titan for, um, and it just gives you a new, different map to play Titan. If you really like Titan, but you're, like, tired of grinding it, go play Watchpoint. That's, like, that's, that's basically it. Alright, number one for our stock-inspired maps, we have Burrows by Sunny Day. Uh, when I saw this map, I instantly fell in love with it pretty much. It's everything about Tunnel's gameplay. The aesthetic, I think, is kept really well, including the... Like, using the gameplay in the aesthetic, if that makes sense, in, in the layout of the map, with the art. Um, it's fast, like, it's it's just everything that a stock map should be. Uh, this map is just, like, really good. Love this map. Uh, on its own, like, spot, stock inspired or not, it's just a really good map. Burrows by the Sunny Day, I think this map is, like, what all stock inspired maps should be. And I think this map is better than most of my stock inspired maps. And maybe even all of them. So, Sunday day, you've upped the you've upped the bar on stock inspired maps, I think, with with Burrows. So you are number one for that category, and uh, yeah, I hope to see more, not only from Sunday day and everybody else who made maps and kind of like got on my list this year, but in in years to come, I want to see more people do it because I think the more different people that do it, and the more you have the same map being done by different people, uh, I think the cooler it is because you just have like I said, the same seed idea planted, and then you can just see the different ways that people, like, interpret it and, like, creatively branch out from from that seed, uh, which I think is just really cool to see always. All right, so I'm going to take another b brief break here to catch up on chat. Uh, it's just a lot of people reacting to maps and talking about maps. Nice. Thumbs up gotta love talking about cool maps okay so lastly uh you can kind of consider this a final category you can kind of not consider it a category you can kind of consider it the general overall category which is kind of what i did was basically the overall um this kind of takes into account everything else that i talked about where Maybe a map didn't necessarily stand out to me as like being super amazing art-wise, but it also had some kind of experimental ideas in gameplay, and it was also kind of just really interesting. And this this map is kind of just if a map didn't like super stand out to me in one area, it probably got here. So a map might still have really good art in this. In fact, a lot of these maps have really good art. Um, but like, I kind of wanted to... I, I thought they also had really good gameplay, or they also had an experimental kind of unique thing, extra, that I think maybe they just deserved to be higher ranked on an overall category than necessarily an art category, if that makes sense. Um, and there's a lot of repeat people in here, um, as we've already gone through. Some map makers are already repeated a lot, so uh, even though I have a map in here that's overall and still has really good art, I still tried to kind of, like... Well, I didn't really try to, because I didn't really change the rankings in anything based on the overall category or whatever. I kind of did the other rankings first, and then the other maps that were... The other maps ended up being an overall, and it kind of worked out in the end. But anyway, uh, basically, if a map is, is in here, it doesn't mean it has bad art, or I didn't necessarily recognize it for the art. Uh, but it, another map already probably, or several maps possibly, got recognized for the art. And this map kind of especially... Uh, was like extremely good in gameplay while also being good art so I kind of like it, it fit more of multiple things so that's why it kind of got an overall anyway that's a long description uh, I, I was gonna say something else but I completely forgot anyway 
Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. At the end of this, by the way, I'm planning to post this VOD on like the Reddit and things so that it's a lot easier to share around and things, and I'm going to highlight it, obviously, um, so that it'll be saved. Um, I'm going to have a comment there that'll link all of these maps, the rankings, the categories separate, and the Atlas link, um, and the creator's name and everything else linked on Reddit or whatever. So if, like, once this is all done and you've watched through it or whatever, if you want to just, like, go play through all these maps, I'm just going to have, like, all 84 linked for you, and you could just click through and, like, maybe you really liked the one screen category. You don't really like uh, fast maps or whatever, but you really like combat levels. Like, you can just play the ones that I highlighted in that category kind of thing. So, yeah, you, they'll be, like, sorted and listed and ranked and everything there, and you can go play them there. All right, cool. That's what I would re was going to remember to say. Okay. So to go through our, our other categories for the people who have not been here from the beginning, uh, I went through all 536 maps made in 2016. Uh, I selected 84 of them, not necessarily a specific number, but just 84 of them kind of stood out to me for one reason or another, and I wanted to recognize them, and I separated some of them into categories and things like that. Uh, so yeah, our categories were art slash aesthetic. Uh, we had first people's, people's first maps uh, that they've made or published to Atlas. Uh, we had like the experimental concept, creative, clever, neat, interesting idea category, uh, where I just highlighted maps that kind of did something that was unusual in terms of other maps. They weren't just a, a map that was like gameplay. They did something else that kind of was a little bit unique. Uh, we had the maps for going fast, for when you just want to go fast. We had the one screen maps, which are kind of combat levels and also maps that just fit on one screen. And then lastly, we had the stock-inspired remix maps. All right, so for our overall category, and it ended up being 40 maps. So it kind of works out because it kind of mirrors like the music industry's like yearly top 40 thing that they used to do. I'm not sure if they still do that. Um, but I remember that used to be a thing when I was like in middle school or something, when you would listen to the top 40. So for the Dust Force 2016 top 40, we have... Coming in at number 40, Contempt by Fims. And yes, that means we're only about halfway done. Uh, so this map just has some solid gameplay. Uh, I tried to keep this map kind of away from difficult levels because I think it's really hard for... A, for me to judge difficult maps, they're not really a style of map that I traditionally like like or super get into playing, um, and I think a lot of their the highlights of them are in the gameplay, um, and so if I'm not really loving it, it's hard for me to like find ones that stand out. Um, and I think it's also kind of a thing where it's hard to recommend and highlight difficult maps because most people, I think, aren't going to really like be able to get much out of it. So, uh, if you like hard maps, you probably know what the super hard maps are that you enjoy, and you know where to find them, uh, and play them, and things like that, and you know which ones are good or whatever, so I kind of, like, skipped that category. Uh, I might do that, like, later as, like, I don't know, maybe next year or something, maybe I'll add that category and I'll make more of an effort to, like, actually play them and try and rank them and pick out the good ones, because... Skipping them at the same time feels kind of bad. But anyway, this is one of maybe the, like, harder maps that still made my list, uh, because I just thought it was good gameplay. Um, I'm not sure if Fims started map making this year. If he did, maybe I just missed, like, what his first map was or something, or maybe his first map was previous to this. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, but yeah, he kind of has, like, a pretty unique map making gameplay style to his maps, uh, but I think most of them are pretty cool. And this one, yeah, stands out number 40, Contempt by Fims. Alright, number 39, we have Sounds Nice by by Sheila Old Point, aka Sheila. Uh, again, just like solid gameplay. That's gonna be most of these maps in here. Just have like really good solid gameplay, which is the main thing that I play maps for. Um, this map I think also did some interesting things with the background and the heavy prisms. Um, I had a minor bit of a problem because not every one of these little like star blue things had a heavy prism on it and that was kind of confusing because some of them did and some of them didn't 
Uh, so that's like a one minor, like, I don't know, feedback for this map, kind of. Um, but yeah, the gameplay overall, still pretty good. And it sounds nice. So yeah, number 39. Number 38, we have Crumbling Courtyard by a Swedish Magyar. Uh, this map, pretty cool mansion gameplay. Um, Swedish Magyar's gameplay is gonna always kind of be pretty solid, and uh, I think his art style on maps is pretty similar to the stock maps, uh, even though his maps aren't necessarily stock map inspired, in a sense. Um, but they generally have a similar look to them, even though the gameplay is kind of pretty different. Um, I don't remember grinding this map that much, that's interesting. Um, I must have done that like way earlier in the year. Uh, but yeah. Number 38, Crumbling Courtyard. Alright, number 37. Uh, also from the new Genesis map pack, we have Metro Transit by Twinkie SWF. Uh, this map, pretty cool gameplay, kind of a unique experimental thing, where you have a mirrored map, but the gameplay is different by the nature of doing one side and then the second one. Um, it's, it's kind of, there's not much to this map in a way, uh, but I still think it's pretty cool, pretty unique, little, short, nice, sweet map, so yeah. Uh, and I really like the background and stuff here, I think it has a cool little, like, uh, like the map is simple because of the concept of it, where it's like just a metro line or whatever, but I still think it kind of keeps it interesting enough at the same time. So nice nice and short, number 37, Metro Transit. Coming in at number 36, we have Tower Descent by Wife in Training. Uh, this map, I think, had some of the most unique gameplay that I saw uh, from all of the 2016 maps. Um, and I really liked it. The map seemed to do basically exactly what it set out to do. And yeah, uh, I kind of don't really like the background, like moons, I guess they're trying to be. Like these little like dots, they kind of were distracting to me. Um, but yeah, the gameplay was just like really solid, really unique, and I think really cool at the same time and flowed pretty well, um, which I think is hard to do, especially on a map that's like this. Um, that's going down. Uh, I think that's that's pretty hard to do, and I think this map does it really well. All right, number thirty-five. We have Ravaged Ramparts by a Swedish Magyar. Again, kind of a similar to a stock map uh, aesthetic-wise, but uh, pretty wildly different gameplay to a stock map, um, and. This map also was kind of experimental on the, the gameplay side. Uh, he kind of worked with these slopes that then tilted downward at the end and kind of sent you downward. And then, like, the gameplay part of it was maintaining your height after being sent downward kind of thing. Um, and then the end here was just kind of some, some interesting platforming uh, while getting dust and building a super. That's your number 35. Coming in at number 34, we have Saturn Valley by Waif and Training. Um, again, I really liked the background, like just color palette for this map. Um, and I thought the gameplay on it was also pretty cool. Um, it's pretty fast in a weird way for the gameplay like layout of this map. Um, Especially with Dustworth, it doesn't really seem like a map that's very, like, suited to Dustworth, but yeah, I just thought it was a pretty neat, pretty neat map, and I really like the color palette, especially it just, like, I don't know, it's a map that kind of just stands out to me as being interesting, for whatever reason. Uh, I find it hard to describe why, apparently. Alright, number 33, we have Paper Tree by JM, aka Cube.
Uh, this map's gameplay, I think, was also pretty cool with these slant boosts, uh, basically. Um, and yeah, it's it's kind of just a fun, unique little map. Um, it, it, it goes fast, but not too fast, if that makes sense, in a, in a nice way. Um, so yeah, I think that's a pretty cool, pretty cool little neato map. All right, number 32, we have Debilitating Descent by a Swedish Magyar. Again, some pretty kind of unique gameplay here. Nice, short, and sweet, and solid. Debilitating Descent at number 32. Number 31, we have Downtown by Twinkie SWF. Uh, this map, I think, was just pretty cool, pretty solid in terms of gameplay. Um, It, I think, used dust blocks pretty well, uh, while also kind of like not just making the entire map about dust blocks, which I think is a very easy kind of like trap to fall into. Um, it feels like a lot of other city maps, uh, but at the same time, feels pretty unique, uh, which is, I think, just pretty pretty cool and pretty hard to do. So yeah, fun little nice solid map. Again, the the new Genesis map pack. Uh, there by Twinkie SWF had lots of pretty good solid maps. All right, coming in at number thirty, we have Castle Siege by Mirk. Uh, Mirk again. The gameplay on this map is pretty cool. Um, it blew my mind to have the archers be. The, the arrows, quote-unquote, of the archers be scrolls. Um, the, the background on this map, the lighting, especially, I think, on this map, with, like, the fires and the red glow to the background, um, and things like that. This map is just great. Um, this is a map that, like, every time I watch through it, I find something new that kind of interests me. These statues are also just kind of... They're, they're funky, but in a kind of neat way, like, in just a really funny kind of... Way. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure that I like the kind of like stained glass look here. It's just a little bit too checkerboarded, I think, for me. I would have liked if it was more, uh, I don't know, had more like solid colors to it or whatever. But it's such a cool map in terms of gameplay and also just like aesthetic and everything else. Merc, thumbs up, man. Castle Siege, number 30. All right, number 29. We have Charcoal by Fims. Uh, gameplay on this map, I think, also pretty cool. Again, shout out to Fims for the gameplay on his maps. I think he has a really unique kind of way of doing the gameplay on his maps, but they always are end up, ended up being really, really fun. Uh, and he keeps them kind of short as well. So, yeah, Charcoal. By Fims, number 30. Or, I'm sorry, number 29. Um, Alright, number 28. We have Blau by Bebop800. Uh, again, just like super cool gameplay on this map. Um, it's very fast, very boosty. Um, and I think he also used the dust box here in a really smart way, if that makes sense. Um, where they don't really detract from the map, which I, again, I think is pretty easy to do. Um, and especially for a virtual map, I think this map had some really unique gameplay to it. Um, so there you go, Blau by Bebop800 coming in at number 28. At number 27, we have Mineshaft by Alex. Uh, this map is 
what I would describe as a city version of Abyss, in a way. Um, it's pretty unique in the gameplay, and I don't really think I've seen another map kind of do this, this sort of gameplay theme to it before, especially for a city level, uh, but I think it does it pretty well. Um, just a nice solid map that I think has some pretty, pretty interesting creative ideas on it, and uh, I like that the the gameplay and the aesthetics like kind of fit in that it's the mineshaft and it's obviously being dug down underground and you're falling and things like that. So I just thought that was a pretty cohesive, cool, cool map for number 27. All right, number 26. We have Drunk Forest by Twinkie SWF. Uh, this is a map that, based on the map name, I did not expect very much out of. And then was extremely surprised that this map actually has some really cool, interesting gameplay. Um, I'm, I'm maybe not sure if this was a happy accident uh, from Twinkie being drunk and map making, but regardless, it worked out to be kind of cool. So maybe that should happen more often. Now, I don't really know. Uh, but this map was, it's one of the ones where, looking through over 500 maps. Uh, there were some where you could know almost on just looking and loading into the map whether it had a chance of being on my list or not uh, pretty easily. And then this was a map where, based on the title and the description, I, I thought, oh man, this is going to be some, some weird wacky ramen map that is kind of awful but still kind of endearing in a way. And then it just surprised me that this map I thought was just actually really cool and really fun uh, gameplay-wise. So that map especially stood out to me. Drunk Forest, number 26. Alright. At number 25, we've broken the barrier. Top 25 here. We have Yellowstone Cave by Twinkie SWF. Again, in the new Genesis map pack. Solid map pack in terms of maps. Um, I think this map might also be stock level inspired, kind of, by Firefly Forest a little bit. Um, but I think it also just has some pretty cool, unique, fun gameplay, and is a really well-made map. I like the, uh, the art style and the, the contrast between the foreground and background. I think solid all around. Uh, one thing I would say is it was a little bit difficult to see enemies on the background of this map with them being like yellow and the background also being yellowish um but that's like a super minor thing like the dust isn't hard to see it's just a few of the enemies i think were like a tiny bit a tiny bit difficult uh like that turkey against the green of the trees there stands out fine kind of so that would be my one little feedback for this map i wish i could have remembered feedback for more of the maps actually um because it feels kind of rude to like give a slight criticism to some maps and not to others, even though I ranked other maps lower than them, if that makes sense. I don't know. I'm not trying to trying to say that at all. Okay, so that was 25, Yellowstone Cave. Number 24, we have Ball Python by Kitar. Uh, so this map I thought was pretty interesting. At first, I thought it was kind of hideout-inspired, but the gameplay actually isn't very much. Um, so I think the gameplay here is just really kind of unique, and I don't know, this map just kind of surprised me in that I wasn't really sure what to think of it. Uh, I liked it though, um, so I thought it was pretty unique, pretty interesting, and yeah, solid, interesting, cool map, very creative, and uh, yeah, thumbs up Kitar. Alrighty, number 24 was Ball Python. Number 23, we have Hot Rocks by Spice Man. Uh, this is another kind of maybe should have been an experimental map, uh, especially for Spice Man. He noted he tried to make a map with no slopes or jumps. Uh, and so for a map maker, I would say maybe known for his Acro Park map series, uh, this map was pretty unique, interesting gameplay-wise. And uh, I still think it's a good gameplay map, and... 
I, I don't necessarily want to see him do this more in the future because he makes really good maps with slopes and jumps, but he also makes good maps without slopes and jumps. So, thumbs up, Spice Man. You make some good maps, dude. All right, I'm gonna have to take a break uh, once we get to our top 20 because I need to go get a drink of water because my voice and throat are like super sandpapery right now. But I can fight through for another two maps. All right. Number 22, we have Fighting Back by Shin Rikoa. Uh, fun gameplay on this map, I think. Pretty, like, all, all the Shin maps kind of have a little bit similar gameplay to them, but they are all different in a way. Um, I really like the ending, I really like the, the boosting in here and the different ways that you keep boosts on ceilings. I thought the art was really cool, especially at the end. Um, and I thought it was a very interesting concept to have these thorns on a lab map almost, and it being like a mold is what it kind of looked like to me like this fungus that had like like spread over the lab kind of and be like I don't know uh, it almost reminds me of like the zerg creep kind of and yeah I just thought it was a pretty cool map pretty good map thumbs up number 22 fighting back by Shin Rikoa number 21 we have circumstance by blue eyed rat uh, this was made for the dust first arcade map pack Uh, gameplay on this map was super unique. These ring things, these like interlocking rings, I hadn't, haven't seen like very often. Um, uh, I don't think Blue Eyed Rat has made very many virtual maps as well. Uh, the sort of like slope into a wall and like rebound back kind of thing was also like a super unique idea that I haven't really seen before. Um, so yeah, thumbs up, Blue Eyed Rat. Cool map. Number 21, Circumstance. All right. I'm going to take a short, like, 30-second break here to go get some water. And then we will be back with our top 20. All right, we are back. The top 20. Here's where it starts getting, I would say, really good. Um, I would almost say that the like 20, like maybe five to 25 to 15 range was possibly the hardest range to sort out in terms of ranking these maps. Uh, like the top one, two, three, you know, those like really stand out. But then once you get like 10, 15 range, they're maps that are really, really good, but you can't really tell how really, really good they are in relation to each other, and they're all really good for different reasons. Oh, so difficult to, like, decide on some of these maps. So, like I said, some of the rankings on these could vary depending on when you asked, asked me to rank them, but they had to be put in some order. It's the order I chose, so it's going to have to do. Alright, number 20. We have, wait, I enabled my mic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, number 20. We have Hyades Aldebaran, Hyades Aldebaran, something like that, by Mirk. Um, again, Mirk pretty much always makes some solid maps. 
Uh, this map is, I think, pretty different gameplay-wise from most of his other maps. But, um... Like, the art style on this, again... Solid, in terms of the, uh, the kind of style to it. I thought the gameplay on this was super unique, while still being pretty fun and interesting, and flowing really well. And, uh, yeah. Thumbs up, nerf map. Gotta... Gotta just respect the Mirk maps for being good. Number 19, we have Secret Castle by Dust Creep. Uh, this map really stood out to me on watching it. The gameplay on this map is super unique. Uh, Dust Creep's gameplay is always kind of unique, but still flows really well. Um, on, on like some geometry setups that I don't think would flow very well and then he like finds a way to make them flow pretty well which is kind of amazing to me his maps look amazing I really like the art style on this it's kind of I, I want to say like simplistic but maybe minimalist is a better word it's kind of some subdued it's not like super uh, flashy it's kind of like a very chill relaxing aesthetic to it but I think it, it you can tell it has a lot of work put into the aesthetic and it just looks great uh, it's, it's very like kind of pleasing to, to look at kind of it's it's not like I said not flashy It's not like attention grabbing, but it's just kind of soothing and zen and I like it secret castle by dust creep number 19 At number 18 We have Amphitoros by Mirk uh, This was a late addition in the year in fact last minute basically um I really think this art style has not been done almost ever with the white buildings in not a lab theme, if that makes sense. Um, and I would like to see it done more. I would say it's kind of hard to distinguish the background from the foreground in this map at places, and so I wish there was a bit more uh, almost grayscale contrast to the map, um, which is hard to do at daytime, so maybe it would be a better way to figure out a way to like incorporate some more shadows into the background so that you could differentiate it better in places but uh yeah overall like the windmills the setting the background he does like a little 3d like effect to it uh you've got like i don't know just the the the, the aesthetic of this map it feels like it's based on a real place and it also reminds me of some other like themes of this in other games like it reminds me of um what is it? Sonic Unleashed is the werewolf game. I feel like a lot of the the environments of those maps, I feel like, are kind of like in this map. It reminds me of that in a, in a bit of a way. So, late addition to the year, but solid map. Coming in at number 18 by Amphitoros. Amphitoros by Mirk. Alright. At number 17, we have Deep Jungle by Kitar. Uh, this map was also really cool. Kitar has some some pretty unique gameplay. Um, the background on this map, I really liked the colors, just the the orange and like green, like this more faded green versus the bright green of the you know the biology or whatever the the foliage and stuff. Um, and then the blue on the spikes, like there's just a lot of contrasting colors to this map. Uh, and even on the background in the sky. Like, I just love the art style on this map. The gameplay is not super my thing. Uh, it's unique, but it's not really, like, something that I super enjoy. But I just think there you can tell there's a lot of work that went into this map. And I really think it's unique, and it's still really good. Um, and it for, for being the gameplay that it is in a style that I don't usually very much like, I like the gameplay on this map pretty well. Uh, so, standout map, Kitar coming in at number 17, Deep Jungle. At number 16, we have Desolation by Shinrakoa. 
Uh, this might be one of the earliest maps on my list. This is in January, on January 10th it looks like. Uh, gameplay on this map, super cool. I love the background and the art. I love the green he, he chose for like this little like slime. Uh, and it being a city level with slime, but still using the trash. Uh, and that kind of theme. I like all the little like... Uh, just like junk kind of inspired like landfill, you know kind of like thing to it. it it's very much it fits the map name uh, I like the industrial like kind of look to it um, I'm not really sure on the like lab transfer into the end here in the ending it's kind of cool in a way but at the same time I feel like the, the rest of the map is kind of different from it uh, almost too much um, and I don't really like kind of like it at the end but the rest of the map is just so good like everything on this map is like thumbs up. The art is so good. The gameplay is good. I love the colors. I love the aesthetic. Solid map. It's number 16. Alright. Number 15. Again, we have a late edition by Mirk. We have Daybreak Cliffs. Uh, again, love the art style and aesthetic on this map. Uh, the colors you chose for the stone on the foreground and background especially are really good. Um, especially in relation to the dirt as well, like the, the sunset, the color of the, of the sky, the little vines, everything about this map is just so good. Um, like, like I said, once we're getting into this territory, it's really hard to, to distinguish and rank these maps. Like, this map's number 15, I think, for me. Yeah, number 15. Um... I mean, anywhere in here, these maps are just so good now. Um, I, I could recommend you play, like, any of these maps, like, for hours on end, and you'll, like, enjoy yourself the whole time. And these are, like, some of the best maps that I think Atlas has to offer, not only in just this year, but probably period. These are some of the top maps uh, of all time now that I would say, like, in my, in my top, I don't know, 50 to 100 top maps of all time. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Number 15. Number 14, we have Storage by JM slash Cube, aka Cube. Uh, gameplay on this map, again, is like super cool, super interesting. Uh, I don't think I've ever had like or seen gameplay like this anywhere else. It's kind of hard to describe, it's kind of just this really interesting style of dust on surfaces being attacked. Uh, and it, it feels very much like a city level, but n like none of the stock city levels, in a way. Um, I would say the closest one is maybe Warehouse? But, yeah, super cool map. I love the gameplay on it, I love the aesthetic of it. It plays super well, super interesting, super creative. Uh, I think it's a unique experience. Storage, number 14. All right, number 13, we have C-Lab 2017 by Mirk, and that title is misleading because this map technically came out in 2017, again, at the very last minute. The art on this map is so good! The gameplay on this map is super cool, but the art on this map, he, he made a map underwater. Like, it literally is underwater this map is so cool and it's a lab map underwater too which i think is super interesting it's almost like um like it's not on a submarine it's almost just like an underwater civilization i won't i would say it's atlantis because it's not very like ancient like greekish like ruiny but uh yeah super cool map gotta love it sea lab 2017 by mirk super late edition had to make the list he made my job a little bit harder putting this list together at the last minute. Alright, number 12. Also by Mirk, we have Enchanted Forest. Uh, alternatively to making a map that has 2017 in the title but is technically in 2016 at just the very last minute, uh, this is a map that came out in January. Uh, so, this map gameplay on it super cool i love the trees on this map and the the forest like 
the silhouettes of the trees is so cool. The gameplay is super cool. I love the little campfire like tent set up here at the end. It just looks everything like what a nighttime like camping forest map should be. Oh, so good. Such good gameplay, such good art style. The trees and foliage and everything on this map, so good. Number 12, Enchanted Forest. Number 11, again by Mirk, Twilight Ocean. This was a late, late edition. Uh, the sunset, he made coconut trees. He still did this like 3D effect with the water and like the islands out in the background that scroll past. It's got the waterfall. This map is so good. This map kind of reminds me of, um, it's, it's almost Hawaiian, but I love the color theme to it. I like that the foreground is kind of faded darker, um, and it fits the sunset I think really well. Just a super good map. The little sailboat, it's so good. Mirk is so good. And making maps, dude. Number 11, Twilight Ocean. Consistent quality from Mirk. Alright, number 10. This is the top 10 overall maps of 2016. Number 10. We've got Jovial Jaunt by a Swedish Magyar. This is top 10 of over 500 maps. Gameplay on this map, super good, super interesting. It's a map that goes left. You can't really see too many of those. Uh, the aesthetics are nice, solid to look at. It's just got like your general forest theme or whatever, but is still kind of new and interesting with like some of the lighting and, and rock formations he chose. Just super nice, super fast gameplay. It's what you're looking for, jovial jaunt. By a Swedish Magyar. Number 10. Coming in at number 9, we have Kaku Kaku by Sleuth Solver. Warning, this map might lag my computer on there first watching it. If it does, I might watch it a second time. Uh, yeah, it's kind of lagging the flame frame rate a little bit there. Um, the background on this map is super interesting, and the gameplay is super cool. The, the color palette, like everything about the background on this map is almost more interesting to me than the gameplay itself, but the gameplay is so good. This map is so good! Like, I, it, it, I, I can't even like process this map, it's like too much going on at once, and that's also why it slows down my computer watching it. Uh, so the frame rate's kind of bad here, it's just like there's so much going on on this map. Uh, and I just think it's really cool. Like, the gameplay is actually really cool and interesting. And I can't even almost pay attention to it enough because I'm so interested in the background. Oh, this map is good. Again, kind of a surprise map that I didn't really think would make my list upon seeing it at first. And then, out of nowhere, Sleuth Solver with Kaku Kaku at number 9. Coming in at number 8. We've got what I believe to be the only Tropicolo map released in 2016. We have Grotto Grove. Tropicolo, solid map maker. I love a lot of Tropicolo maps. Uh, this is an old map I guess he had uh, in his kind of like vault. Uh, gameplay on it's super cool. I love to use the dust blocks. It goes fast. It's just like Tropicolo makes some good maps, man. Uh, the background and, and art style is kind of, I would say, basic and minimalist in a way, but but also nice and pleasing to look at. It's just kind of, like I said, not super flashy, but just kind of pleasing to look at. It, it kind of fades into the background. I like the little like house at the end that you like go over. Super solid. Tropicolo. Wish he got back into making maps. Gotta give a thumbs up. Number 8, Grotto Grove from Tropicolo. Coming in at number 7, we have Gardener by JM aka Cube. Uh, the gameplay on this map, super interesting, super cool use of dust blocks and dust on surfaces, 
and you're just attacking almost constantly. Uh, I like the little background, like, extra, like, brown, like, shoot-offs that come from where the dust is on stuff. Super cool. I love the gameplay of this map. Uh, I, I can tell the concept, like, immediately when you play through it. I just think it encapsulates the concept super well, the gameplay is super fun, super interesting, flows really well, uh, and yeah. Probably kind of a hard map, I didn't even realize there were that many few SS's on it, but I think that map is like exactly what it needs to be, and I love it. So, number seven, Gardener. Uh, that's maybe a map that people didn't, like, maybe an underappreciated map, I guess, that I didn't really realize. Maybe that should be a category next year. It's like maps that went under the radar that I think deserve, like, extra recognition. That's a good idea. Anyway, that's a map under the radar, possibly. Go play Gardener. I think you'll enjoy it. Number seven. All right, number six. We have Pulse by Blue-Eyed Rat. Oh, uh, this is something I should mention, by the way. My top ten is entire different people. There's no repeat map maker in the top 10, which I didn't intend to do, but it just worked out that way, which is super cool and super interesting. Uh, the aesthetic on this map, the idea behind it, when when you watch through this map, so good. The the use of doubling back on dust blocks there, I think super cool. I just love the little, like, the, the map pulsing color, literally, as you're playing through it with, like, this little lightning thing of, like, a, uh, what am I trying to say? What's that thing called that shoots lightning? Oh, I can't remember it all. But it, it, it's a a Tesla coil. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, of like it, just having like these sparks of lightning. I think the material he used, like to make the lightning out of on the background, is super cool, super interesting. I love the gameplay on this map. Pulse by Blue Eyed Rat, number six. Top map of 2016, number six. Love it. All right. Coming in at number five, we have Veranda by Twinkie SWF as part of the new Genesis map pack. Downhill inspired. Love the gameplay on this map. Background super interesting. The aesthetics are super nice. Solid gameplay, fun to like at. Fast, nice. I saw this map and I fell in love with it before having ever played it. And after playing it, it just solidified it even more in my mind. Love this map, Veranda. Perfectly encapsulates what I think a map inspired by Downhill should be while still being different. Still flows really well. It's almost slower than Downhill, but I kind of like it. It, it, it allows you to almost appreciate the map more for being a little bit more slow and mellow and less intense. Alright, number four. We have Bubbling Springs by Dust Creep. Again, super interesting gameplay on this map. I love the aesthetic of it. The water is so good. I love the little like bubbly clouds. I can't tell if they're supposed to be bubbles or clouds. And I love that I can't even tell that. It's just fun either way. I love the, the wood. I love the stone. I love the use of slime on a wood map. Like that's super unusual. Uh, I just love everything about this map. It's super unique, super interesting. Uh, I love this map. Thumbs up. Dust Creep, you did it again. You have a super unique, interesting, cool map. Number four, Bubbling Springs by Dust Creep. All right, number three, we have Golden Grotto by Spice Man. For a guy who's known for Acro Park series, uh, I didn't really expect myself to love this map as much as I would, but I love this map. Uh, I love the background colors, especially. The background is almost better than the gameplay again on this map, but the gameplay is super good. It's a Spice Man map. Like, the gameplay is good. The gameplay is really good. But the background colors, I, I, the, the colors he used for this background, like, blow my mind. They look perfect, 
the golden grotto I think encapsulates it perfectly. I love that there's this contrast between the the bright yellow that's immediately like shaded by this darker color. Like I love the sunset. I love that it like the, the layout of the map goes like up and down and in and out of like underground a bunch of times. I love this map, Golden Grotto. Super solid at number three. Coming in at number two, we have Wooden Woods by Giyama. Or, or Giyama, I don't know, actually, no. Uh, I think this map was really hard to decide uh, versus number one on. Uh, Giyama makes really good map, really good gameplay here. I love, love the background aesthetic of this map. I love the color palette. I love the wood. I love that it's such a wood theme, but I love the green, like, peeking through the background with the planks, like, being, I don't know, uh, support beams, like, connecting it through. Uh, I love, like, the little lanterns at the end. I love this map. Wooden Woods, number two, by Giyama. Super solid, tough decision. Oh. And we are at the end. It feels good. We're almost there. So what is my award for the best overall map of 2016 out of 536 maps? We have our winner. And it is Moonlight Path by Mirk. I had to give this map the number one. It did so many unique things. The gameplay on it is so good. The art on this map did so many unique things. It got bamboo, it got cat statues, it's got these little like Japanese pagoda like things that I don't know what the name of them is, but I need to go look it up because I'm super interested to know what the name of it is. It's got these little lights, the bridges, the houses, the Japanese style housing, the lanterns. The gameplay on this map is so good. The color palette is so good. And what the hell is that cherry blossom tree? That blew my mind when I saw that cherry blossom tree. I've tried to make a cherry blossom map. I thought it looked good. My map sucks in compared to that cherry blossom tree. That map is one of my top maps of all time. And it is the, like, it is my pick for the best map of 2016. Moonlight Path by Mirk. Such a good map. It just, it was tough. But everything about this map pushed it over the top, above everything else, I think. Mirik, you outdid yourself on this one. You've outdone possibly, like, the majority of every other map ever made with this one. Uh, I don't know how you can capture the magic of that map again, but you've raised the bar for everyone else forever to come. And with that, we have concluded the Dust Force Custom Map Awards of 2016. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, if I didn't mention one of your maps that you thought should have been on here, honestly, I'm sorry. I looked through 536 maps and I had to narrow it down. Originally, I was going to make this a YouTube video and I wanted to narrow it down so that I could actually finish the video. And then I ended up realizing that I wanted to give too much recognition to too many maps anyway, trying to do that. And I couldn't narrow it down any further because I wanted to be positive and like just recognize so many different people in different maps for so many different things. So I just decided to live stream it anyway, and now it's 2 in the morning, 2.40 in the morning, and I'm doing this, and I feel great. It feels good. I love the custom maps. I love the different, like, cool things people do. I love seeing them do more. I wanted to give recognition. I wanted to be positive. thought it was a new year. It is cool to do a wrap-up of, of it. Uh, yeah. I love this. I love this idea. I like streaming it. And, uh, yeah. I have a write-up thing that I'll finish up and I'll post it to the Reddit after I do the highlight thing. Might do that tomorrow morning. I don't know. Maybe somebody else can post it and then I can post the comment like tomorrow morning when I wake up. I don't know. Uh, but I need to go to sleep. And yeah, that's your custom map awards for 2016. I hope everybody enjoyed. I hope you found some cool new maps that you can go play. I hope you got reminded of some cool maps that you want to go back and play even if you already did play them before. Even if you have already played them before, I hope you enjoyed just having some cool recognition. Uh, again, if I didn't mention your map, I'm sorry. It was probably good. 
is just really hard to narrow down 536 maps when a majority of them were pretty good maps. And you had to just find like the best of the best, the ones that stood out for some reason or another. And again, this is my personal opinion. Uh, you know, blah blah blah, like, I won't give the whole spiel or whatever, but you can disagree with me, and that's totally fine. Thumbs up, cool, hope everybody enjoyed, that was a fun stream to do. I enjoyed that, I liked that idea, uh, I'm glad I did it, I did it. I'm glad I put in the work into it, because uh, watching through 536 maps took me, took me like two weeks to do, <laughs> and I did, did it in like three hour chunks at a time, uh, of watching through like, a hundred maps at a time. Uh, and it took me a long while, and then it ended up being that the YouTube video getting made for it was, like, way too much work, and, uh, I, I was like, I, I, this is too good of an idea. I already messed up not doing the idea in 2015 and never finished, so I wanted to, like, finish it. I think a live stream is, like, a good compromise. Once I get, like, the rankings all done, just going through it live is, like, way better than trying to record the clip and clip it all together, and then I was gonna make, like, little, like, uh, like, note cards on the top right and left of like what the map maker's name is and what the what the map maker what what the map's name is and the map maker's name and like list it on the top right and they'll have that like be built into the video and things like that which is like way too difficult uh way easier to just like say it out loud and like continue on and just like click the replay link instead of like clipping all the different youtube clips together of like 84 different maps all in order and things like that so yeah all right that's it custom app awards 2016 I hope you all enjoyed. Fun new year. That's my that's my Christmas present or whatever to the to the Dust Force community for this year. Uh yeah. That was fun. I'm like super pumped. I don't know how to end the stream, but I'm going to. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for enjoying. Thanks for watching. It was fun having people here. Damn that took an hour and forty five minutes. I don't know if I'll be able to do that any faster. Hopefully there's more maps, more good maps in twenty seventeen. And this will be like four hours next time. I can safely say that I will not be upset by that in the slightest. So yeah, make that the goal. Break four hours on Birds Awards stream for 2017.